I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Sam Kim, the founding partner of Umbrella Network. Sam, welcome back to the show. It's a pleasure having you on once again. Thanks, Ashton. Uh, good morning to you and the audience. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to be back here on your show. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to the conversation. Very much looking forward to it. A lot has happened with Umbrella Network in the past couple months and with the DeFi world, oracles and cryptocurrency is just continuing to explode, which is a great thing. And there's a lot of updates with Umbrella Network. I know you guys have made some amazing new partnerships, acquisitions, uh, growth targets. But first, for the audience that missed our first interview, I would love to get everyone up to speed. If you could just explain a little bit about Umbrella Network, some of the solutions that you're bringing to the cryptocurrency space, then we can dive into those details. Yeah, I mean, it's been an exciting few months. To be honest, things have moved so fast. I can't even remember how many months it's been since you had me on the show. But, uh, you know, I am excited to give you guys an update. It's been an incredible time in our in, in our cryptocurrency um, market in the industry and technology. And but before we go to that, yes, let me give you kind of uh, to your viewers a quick update and overview of what Umbrella is, right? So Umbrella Network um, is a community-owned Oracle uh, primarily for the DeFi market today, but we're expanding into other areas as we can discuss coming up. But um, how we're different is one, you know, we are community owned in the sense that we're the first uh, Oracle in the market where our validators are actually members of the community. It's not just uh, professional outfits that are, you know, large companies running validator nodes, nor is it just us running a node. It's really members from who have been early contributors in our community who are uh, providing the security uh, of the network. So that's one thing that makes us different. Second part is that we are a low cost, uh, high efficiency product out there for oracles. In other words, what we do is we aggregate um, a lot of data, uh, currently 1200 data feeds. Our goal is to get to 10,000 by the end of the year. Uh, and we aggregate those into a Merkle tree. And we can get into this you know, in a bit, but Merkle trees are a very efficient way to store data um, it's used in both Bitcoin and Ethereum, as you know, you, as you know, Ashton, and um, therefore it reduces the cost for us to get data on chain, and therefore we're able to offer far more data um, uh, than other oracles in the marketplace. And so that's those are the two you know unique qualities about Umbrella Network. Definitely, thanks for that, Sam. And I would love to just add a little bit to that because I know some of the viewers, you know, with this crazy crypto, they're just getting into DeFi. You know, they're holding Bitcoin yeah. and Ethereum and now they're starting to experiment with these financial lending protocols and, and swapping. And some need a little bit of an explainer on, you know, why exactly are oracles needed or how exactly are they needed for DeFi? Maybe you can just touch on that briefly. Yeah. So well, for those of you who are kind of new from you know, bridging, making the bridge from Bitcoin and Ethereum into kind of the uh, next level uh, in crypto, welcome. Um, you know, we all started off as Bitcoin maxis, right? At least some of us early ones. Uh, I started as a Bitcoin maxi in 2013. I'm sure you did as well, Ashton. Um, I love Ethereum. I don't know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I made the jump to Ethereum, you know, in 2017. Mm -hmm. So maybe I was a little late to the game compared to some others, but still, you know, um, an early fan and early user of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what's unique about the Ethereum and, and the subsequent blockchains that have come since Ethereum is that smart contracts can't access data that's not sitting on chain. Mm -hmm. So unlike Web2, where, you know, uh, you use your phone to call an Uber app, uh, car, and that app then accesses data through an API, right? Like smart contracts simply can't do that. They need the data brought to be brought on chain. The, however, the challenge is that how do you get that data from uh, the centralized sources that are sitting on a server somewhere? How do you make it available on chain in a secure manner? So if you think about smart contracts, they're all open source and public. So they know exactly how the data is used. And so if somebody can manipulate that data in such a way that they can effectively manipulate the response that that smart contract has. And so let's take like a lending platform. You put in an asset into a lending platform that gets loaned out to the community or uh, if you can, you need to understand as a smart contract, you need to value uh, that asset that's sitting in your in your contract, mm -hmm. in your vault. And if you know that data signal can be manipulated, then 
you can say you can justify that that asset is now that asset that's sitting in the vault is under collateralized. That loan is under collateralized, and therefore foreclose on it. So it's that type of stuff that oracles protect against. And how do we do that? Like we do that by one um, looking at multiple data sources. What we've seen in the past year or so is that these attacks that you know we call them flash loan plus oracle manipulation hacks. They tend to um, be successful only in manipulating the data in one data source. Uh, it's complex or nearly impossible to manipulate the data across multiple data sources mm -hmm. in a single uh, block transaction, a single block. And therefore, what we do as oracles is look at as many data sources as possible. We run some, um, you know, run our own proprietary algorithm to determine what is the most representative price of that asset and then provide that to the smart contract. And so, you know, kind of a long way, long way to say that what oracles really do is we bring data from the centralized world on chain, but we do it uh, by ensuring security uh, mm -hmm. throughout the entire process so that smart contracts can't be manipulated. Definitely, yeah, and it's so interesting, you know, when you finally understand that, you know, the prices of assets that are on the blockchain, you know, the prices aren't actually on the blockchain. There's no value there. It's all like brought in through the APIs, through the external price data feeds, through the oracles to actually show you what something is worth uh, that's sitting on the blockchain. Um, yeah, so I mean, you're totally right about that, Ashton. I mean, like if you think about it, um, there were a lot of projects that were kind of bypassing uh, oracles in the early days. And uh, as a result, there are a lot of them were exposed to, to hacks. And so mm -hmm. I think we've come a long ways. I mean, I think the hackers are probably going through the next phase of iterate, the iteration of like uh, enhancements. But, you know, oracles are, you know, the most secure way to, and not just Umbrella, but I should mention, like oracles in general, there, you know, there needs to be a lot of good thriving oracles in the marketplace. And Umbrella Network is just is one of the one of them and we're one of the few that's made it to uh, mainnet already, but you know mm -hmm. there are many great oracles that are in the market today and probably coming afterwards. And, and as an industry, we need that, right? Because no mm -hmm. oracle can serve every project's needs. Like although mm -hmm. the project data requirements are just all different and unique, and so um, you know we'll, we'll see a growth in the oracle space. Definitely, and with umbrella and just overall with oracles, it seems that the currently the primary use case is to bring those price data feeds into DeFi to be able to value these assets and have people be yeah. able to trade them. Uh, but there are other use cases as well. Uh, I would love for you to talk about, you know, what you've been, the main focus obviously has been price data feeds, but now you're moving into other potential use cases as Oracle's continue to expand out. Yeah. I mean, we always envisioned uh, Umbrella Network as an, uh, serving multiple purposes and in industries. Mm -hmm. I mean, DeFi, you know, was the obvious first choice, and then we're, you know, we're serving that market today. But as we look forward, we're looking for other industries uh, that are next going to adopt it. And so we look, and today we're looking at the space in the NFT and gaming market, and there's obvious usage cases for oracles there, uh, which we can get to, and we'll, and we'll, we'll be, you know, um, entering that market as well. Second, you know, in addition to, to that market, you know, we made a major move yesterday uh, in the acquisition of Lucidity to uh, enter the digital advertising market because, you know, we believe that that is an industry that suffers from a lot of inefficiencies and quality issues that an or a digital or advertising oracle can serve. And so, you know, we're really excited about that and uh, looking forward to making improvements and uh, growing that business. Definitely. Yeah, I saw that. That looks like a huge achievement for the Umbrella Network. So congratulations, first of all, Sam. And I would love to know a little bit more about this acquisition. You know, what does Lucidity specifically do and what was the rationale behind making this large acquisition? Yeah, well, first, thank you very much. Like, we are really excited about it. Um, so the acquisition, why, you know, Lucidity, why digital advertising, right? And we, so we... Now, we do believe strongly that uh, we're not far from seeing enterprises adopt uh, blockchain technology. It's just the benefits are just so are real and um, the technology has come a long ways. But if you look at the original like 2017 ICO booming, boom, and you know, a lot of the uh, projects, they were focusing on putting everything in digital advertising on the blockchain. But the problem with digital advertising is that it operates at you know, 500 to a million transactions, 500,000 to a million transactions per second. 
there's no blockchain that can do that, right? Like whether it's Solana, Cardano, like name it, none of them can operate at that kind of scale, let alone support other projects running on the same network, right? And so there's always going to be, at least in, in, in the foreseeable future, an element that's run off chain, right? And that being like the actual processing of these transactions. So how do we use the blockchain? Like what Lucidity does that's really unique and intelligent is that they allow the, the, the transactions to occur off chain because of that scale issue. But it takes all of the data that is produced by all of the participants along the supply chain and brings that data on chain, right? You take the data from, you know, the ad verification platforms, the uh, buy side platform, the supply side platform, right? For those of you who are new to digital advertising, like it, it is, uh, it, you know, the majority of ad, uh, digital ad display ads are run through a programmatic channels, where it's basically a real time auction going on. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in a, running a typical ad, there's anywhere from 10 to 14 participants in that ad plat in that in the running of that ad. And so what Lucidity does takes the data from all of those different participants and puts it on the blockchain. And on the blockchain, now you can uh, run analytics, uh, you can automate business processes and logic. And so those the future and the dream that we had back in 2017 of automating uh, the verification of ad impressions along with the payments and transactions from the ad buyer all the way to uh, the publisher and making that more seamless quicker and easier like we can do that we just don't have to run everything on chain let the oracles like umbrella and lucidity bring that data on chain and let um, projects create the analytics along with the uh, smart contracts to run those business processes mm -hmm. and that's what we you know we're looking at this spearhead with this acquisition um and we're really excited i think the partnership and Umbrella's, you know, unique knowledge and experience with Oracle's, along with Lucidity's uh, long history in the digital advertising space, and it's, and not, and not obviously, you know, the brands and the agencies that they currently work with, uh, bringing that to business is just really exciting. And I, I, you know, I think we're going to unlock a lot of potential for the digital advertising market. Definitely, yeah, it's super exciting to finally make that next step from where you were talking about in 2017. Uh, having a lot of blockchain based advertising platforms, but they didn't really have the DeFi Oracle um, kind of mechanisms where the oracles can bring information and, and bring take a load off of this million transactions and so many different pieces of data trying to move in with digital advertising because it is a huge yeah. uh, industry. Um, do, do you foresee, you know, the blockchain space moving towards, you know, like it sort of seems like you guys are taking a, a first mover's lead. Uh, into bringing oracles into the digital advertising space. Do you foresee the growth in blockchain digital advertising and including oracles as well uh, to be, you know, pretty big in, in the next coming years? Yeah, so actually, I mean, like we all experience digital advertising every single day when we're surfing the web. And yeah. that market is itself just growing rapidly, right? Just look at the market cap of the major players in that industry, whether it's Google, uh, the trade desk, you know, Facebook, right? They're all basically advertising platforms. You know, how do we intelligently bridge that difference between the centralized traditional advertising to the blockchain, right? And that's where the Oracle comes in. And so we're gonna see a ton of growth, not just bringing that data on chain, but what business functions can we then move on chain, right? What can we automate? What can we improve? And, um, you know, I think we unlock that. We'll, we'll be strategic about what we build and what we partner with and what we incentivize through um, kind of partnership with projects uh, participating in that network. But actually, like, it's, it's not just digital advertising that oracles can do this for, right? Like, mm -hmm. if you look, think about it, there are a lot of businesses where you just can't run everything on chain, at least not today, right? And, and gaming is another example, right? None of the blockchains today um, can, you know, their transaction size are too, are too limiting so that uh, the amount of game logic you can run on chain is it's pretty minimal at today, right? Mm -hmm. And so how can you allow a game to continue to function and, and perform the way they do today while taking pieces of it and making that available on the blockchain so that you can have automate business processes, automate analytics and transactions? Mm -hmm. Once again, that's where the Oracle comes into play. So, you know, we're looking at gaming, digital advertising, uh, we're looking at traditional businesses, anything from like supply chain to manufacturing, uh, 
you know, we're, we're, there, we just see a whole world of potential for oracles to unlock uh, for traditional businesses. For, so for them to benefit from the things that we've been working on for the past four or five years as a, as a crypto community, right? Like all the yeah. things about smart contracts, all the improvements, all the things that we're seeing, all the benefits we're seeing in DeFi, like we can make that available to traditional businesses. And that's where the oracles come into play. Definitely. Yeah, it's very exciting. And uh, speaking of the community, I, I really like how you started out our discussion just talking about how it's community, uh, you know, can, community governed and, and you can run uh, part of the network as a community member. And I was looking that when your team made this acquisition with Lucidity, there was a lot of interest from the community uh, in the Umbrella token. And I just wanted to touch on that. Um, maybe if you could talk a little bit about the token and how it's interacting with the oracles and if there's any uh, foreseeable interactions with this acquisition with Lucidity and how Umbrella yeah. Network Token interacts with that. Sure. So, you know, the Umbrella Token is kind of two, it serves two functions, right? Um, well, ultimately it will serve two functions. One, it'll run um, the proof of stake network where as a validator, you put your tokens at stake um, and gives you the amount of, it gives you voting power, right? And, and determining what transaction, what data should we should bring on chain. Um, and that's already in place. That's, you know, we're making enhancements uh, to that proof of stake system today. And, you know, we're, we're, but it's already live and it will be improving over the next, you know, uh, foreseeable future. Second part of it is the delegated proof of stake. So that part, you know, uh, we are not running on a DPOS um, governance layer yet. But the goal is to get those tokens into the governance of the ecosystem, and so today, in you know, in lieu of uh, being in, the, in a true DPOS system, what we have is a system of community council members, right? And so, uh, to take a, as an example, the umbrella to the Lucidity acquisition, you know, we've struck, we've negotiated the deal terms, we've done the due diligence, and we signed off on the term sheet and all that. Uh, now it's going to be in the hands of the community council. To review all the materials and vote it up or down and that'll happen uh, i believe it's scheduled for monday and so we're really excited to the community council has voted on other things too right but this is the first like true blar uh, a truly big and important thing that they're voting on and so mm -hmm. i'm excited and uh we actually have a lot of things that we're voting on monday not just mm -hmm. this so uh we have a lot of good things coming up in the near future that you know we're gonna make every concerted effort um to give the community council the ability to vote, ultimately uh, the delegates representing the community. But you know, we're, it's it's interesting because you know when you, something like an M and A transaction, you're, you're always balancing the sensitivity of keeping things private, right? Because you don't want uh -huh. to expose the deal and allow other people to come in and and then you know compete with you. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we are a community-run project, and so how do we balance that? And so. Uh, I think we came up with a nice balance of that, and um, you know we're, we're looking forward to continuing this model until uh, we can allow people to vote for delegates through a DPoS system. That's very cool, Sam. And for people that are interested in getting involved with that community, potentially you know voting on future proposals, getting involved with the DPoS, uh, and helping run the Oracle network, what's the best way for people to learn more and to get involved? Yeah, so you know we're pretty active in two areas. First, come to our website. It's uh, um, umb.network. Uh, from there, you can find the links to all of our other channels. And then second, you know we're really active on Twitter. So it's umb network. Uh, we tweet everything, and you know you know if you do any transaction, like please check out our Twitter first, um, and then obviously you know our Telegram community. Our Telegram mm -hmm. community. Uh, recently uh, broke 30,000, and so we're 30,000 strong today. We're really excited by that. Uh, 30,000 active, committed voices <laughs> out there. And so please join us on Telegram and uh, ask us questions. We're happy to engage. And we'd happy, happy to, you know, the other thing is that, you know, we are actually right now taking on more community validators. Like mm -hmm. we had our first rollout. It went really well. Um, you know, the cost of running the network was even lower than we expected. And so the returns to the values were quite uh, strong. And so now we're ready to bring on some more. And we'd like, you know, we, we, we want to keep growing this validator network because um, the goal is really to be the community owned Oracle. Mm -hmm. Definitely keep it going. Great speaking with you, Sam. I will leave those community links as well in the description box below. All the best with uh, Umbrella Network and Lucidity moving forward. And let's follow up again in the near future. 
Thanks, Ashton. Look forward to catching up again uh, with some more major news.